guys, welcome to the channel today. So today I have a very special video. We have, uh, this is our first state of the market address and I have very special guests with me today, Plato, who has realized some of the uh, DeFi dream that a lot of us have, starting with a very small account and turning it into a big bag uh, in a short amount of time. Now, we all know the markets are down, but we are just gonna, we're just gonna talk about, you know, the condition of the market and how Plato got his start and how he, he what the lessons he learned along the way so that we can all learn from his experience. So, hey, Plato, how you doing? Hey, how's it going? Hey, Brendan, uh, thanks for having me. I think what you're doing is so, so cool right now. Um, the markets, I also think it's a crazy day. We're probably the very historic day yes. uh, to, to be doing this too. So very brave for both of us, you know? Um, yes. And like, shout out to anyone just watching. If, if like, if you're tapped in, if you're watching like on this day in these conditions, like you already made it. Like you're, you're already a frontier. Yes. You're already like there. Yes, um, yes. For sure. So, so yeah. And I really appreciate you coming on to our, to our channel. Is there like, what kind of, how did you get your start in DeFi? You know, like what, what brought you in and, and what network specifically did you start on? So um, my story with DeFi is like a little bit of my story with trading. Um, so I have some trading background, mm -hmm. um, but it wasn't crypto. Uh, okay. Probably like a couple years ago, like seven, six years ago, uh, I used to trade Forex. Wow. Uh, and when I say I used to trade Forex, I gave Forex a try. Um, okay. Yeah. <laughs> I gave Forex a try. You know, um, I was uh, still fresh out of high school. I was looking for alternatives to make money. And just like a lot of investors, we kind of realized that, you know, like while working is pretty cool, you know, having a solid income. Mm -hmm. uh investing is a pretty neat way of generating income and, and you know wealth yeah um so i tried forex got absolutely wrecked like oh, absolutely man. wrecked um so i went through that whole getting wrecked phase mm -hmm. pretty early uh with a different market okay um, wow. just completely slaughtered and no. <laughs> probably just like every every newbie uh, trader that face that goes yes. in and first get uh, wrecked they probably yeah. there's a while where they leave the markets alone right yeah so i let i left i completely left the markets alone uh i'm just like okay i know how to click buy i know how to click sell <laughs> i get the, the the generals of trading i just i you know like forex wasn't for me wow um so, so fast forward to probably like um 2020 mm -hmm. uh, yeah 2020 so that's when uh, COVID hit <laughs> mm -hmm. uh, fast forward to 2020 in the beginning um I was doing like everyone else. I had some Robinhood, a Robinhood app, you know. Yes. Uh, trade yep. a little, you know, Tesla here. Trade a little bit, you know. I would, I wouldn't look much into it, right? Mm -hmm. Um, but then in the so how my DeFi journey got started is when I opened up a Twitter specially made for crypto. Okay. So uh -huh. you know, um, I was always a fan of Twitter. It's funny memes, right? Uh, so I started my crypto account specifically to kind of be like a journal, like a, like some type of journal for me. Okay. Uh, and I already knew like, you know, that markets sometimes run on news. So for me, it was just easy looking up news already on Twitter. So I made yes. an account just, just for Twitter. Um, and yeah. it's funny because if you look at my first post on Twitter, like you can tell I'm such a newbie, I'm, tra I'm trading BSV. <laughs> Okay. <laughs> you know, I was like, nice. CSV to the moon, you know? Oh, yeah. <laughs> and, um, you know, I started doing what poly people do on, on crypto, um, on, on, on Twitter, uh, looking up the cash tags. And then mm -hmm. I saw there was like a whole community of people, you know, trading crypto and putting wow. it online, using wow. social media to power it. So I think uh oh, wow. opening up you know uh, a twitter just for crypto is really what uh put me on DeFi. Yeah. um wow. and i remember one of my first DeFi purchases was link okay because um, wow. i came you know i would trade robin in here and there um and then it wasn't until like late uh august probably like late late july i remember seeing link go from like six seven dollars to mm -hmm. like fifteen dollars yeah. like right in front of me and then wow. i i'm over here thinking like i'm here trading bsv on robin hood this thing called link yeah you know like two <laughs> two three x right in front of me like yeah you know, okay this this is where the game is at wow. you know um and then i remember i reached out to one of the link uh, um 
one of the link uh, community members Mm -hmm. uh the link marines i reached out to one of them and i'm just like <laughs> hey like you know how do i how do i get access to to this you know wow and then they're like you know DeFi, and i'm like, like what's DeFi?" and i remember you know being made fun of like you've been have you been under a rock or something <laughs> you know and wow. i'm like okay so did some research uniswap you know and uh purchased some link you know because i just wanted to be just get in on it you know i, I fumbled oh, wow. into link um so that was my real my first step into um into DeFi. Uh, and then from there, naturally, just, you know, the nature of Uniswap, um, I started trading, um, you know, uh, different coins, like different stuff that would launch. Yeah. Um, you wow. know, I, there are so many I've traded. I wish I could name you off the bat, a few that I, I traded early on. Um, but mm -hmm. I was early enough where I caught that Uniswap airdrop. Um, wow. Okay. Yeah. So I didn't, I didn't start off with much. Uh, mm -hmm. My story is um, COVID hit like in 2020. Mm -hmm yeah um and like a lot of us uh we got hit pretty hard as far as uh, job wise mm -hmm. uh, economic wise like the economy just slowed down so i remember i was doing prior to um DeFi, uh i was doing um anything i can get my hands on as far as like uh, a gig a gig job i was doing uh wow uber, uber driving uh lyft driving uh instacart i would deliver groceries Okay. Uh, wow. Uber Eats, you know, like I was just okay. literally trying to find a w way to pay rent, a, to a way to pay bills. Cause at the time yeah. uh, my job had let me go. So okay. it was just, I had no real sense of income. So I was just doing that. So I went into DeFi looking for a way to like pay the bills, you know, like if, I'm like, okay, wow. if this can just help me pay the bills, like if this, like, I'll be happy with that, you know, cause mm -hmm. I was just, I came from a place where like, I was just working all the time. And I was just like, okay, this is, this is not it, you know, <laughs> Yeah, this is not it. My car's taking a beating, like, okay. Oh, like, man. Um, my first big trade. Um, and if those of you who were around, especially last uh, fall, y'all remember core. Mm, mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> wow. Um, okay. Um, and at this time, um, all I really had was my uni airdrop, right? Yes. Uh, you know, I was still trading. I was hearing that I was still learning what uh, the ins and outs of just just trading and DeFi and everything. Um, how do you call it? I remember when Core Force came out, the there was an uh, they were doing an auditing on on Core as it launched, and I remember okay. just thinking like that's so cool, like that's so cool. And I think wow. also when when Core first came out, they they brought out like the concept like block liquidity. Uh huh. Uh, yeah. They brought out the concept of like liquidity, so everyone was just just in on hype. So. You know, like I just got my whole uni airdrop and I just like threw it all in core. That's it. I remember <laughs> wow. I got in core at 600. If you remember, core went up the way all the way to like 9,000. Wow. Wow. Yeah. That's so incredible. for the next, I think for the next four or five days, like core was just nonstop, huge dips, huge rips. Mm -hmm. um, and it was just nonstop. And then I remember basically that was my first big trade as mm -hmm. far as uh, DeFi goes. Um, and from there, I also learned a lot of lessons as well. Mm -hmm. Yeah, for sure. Yeah. And what, what were some of the, like, you, what were some of the lessons you learned, like winning big early on, it's almost debatable as whether it's better to win big early or whether it's better to wait until you've gotten some of those foundational trading lessons. Do you feel like, do you feel that way? Do you feel like it's good? Like it, like it helped you to win? Well, I guess you already had some trading experience, but but what were some of the lessons you learned from core, like taking off like that? Uh, there was definitely some lessons. And then as far as DeFi, there's nothing like it. Um, yeah. I think whether you trade stocks, Forex, commodities, um, even regular crypto, there's, there's, there's a difference yes. as you're trading DeFi, trading launches, mm -hmm. uh, you know, dealing with bots, dealing with rugs, uh, yes. dealing with different uh, problems that are just unique to DeFi in itself, yeah. you know? Mm-hmm. Um, but I would actually say it almost doesn't matter if you win big early. Uh, I personally, I would think it's like riding a bike or like driving a car. You kind of want to okay. get that first little accident or you want to get that first little fall. I think yeah. just as early as possible. Yeah. Um, because experience has a big thing to do with as far as like trading. Yes. I feel like DeFi has experience has a big thing to do with it. Um, yeah. Only because I feel like everyone um, has like their own style. Everyone has like their own rhythm. Uh, yeah. 
just like sure. singing, just like dancing, just like sports, you know, mm-hmm. uh, LeBron James and Dwayne Wade, they, they don't play the same. No, they're both yeah. legendary, though, you know. So, yeah. like, I definitely think, um, you know, you can't be scared, you know, uh, obviously, yeah. trade responsible, trade what you can afford to lose, right? Mm-hmm. But mm-hmm. you can't be scared to make mistakes. Um, you yeah. can't be scared to dabble in. Um, I'm not saying be reckless, you know. Mm-hmm. But if you're going to be, there's a smart way to be reckless as opposed to like yeah. a dumb way to be reckless, a dumb for way sure. to ape and a smart way to ape. Yeah, yeah, for sure. Yeah, <laughs> I definitely hear you. That's great. That's great. So so what about the the current market conditions and what is what is your take on like what's happening in the markets right now? Do you think this is part of the natural cycle or do you think it's a little bit uh, manipulated artificial because I see a lot on Twitter about that. What is what's your thoughts? Uh, as far as current market conditions, I yeah, like the think, dip, like the the major dives and everything. <laughs> yeah, um, I think it's a little bit of both. Mm-hmm. I think um, you know we have came a long way since yeah. uh, this time last year. I think we have came an extremely long way. When you actually look at the charts since uh, yeah. March, April of 2020, it's been going nothing but up. You know. Yes. So um, I do think it's natural. Mm-hmm. I think the speed of which things are happening are a bit unnatural. Oh, okay. Yeah. Um, yeah. So I do feel it's a little bit of both at a good timing. I do feel it's a bit of coordinated FUD. Um, yeah. Because yeah. as far as you can see, it was like one FUD, Elon Musk, then China. Before yes. that, it was the whole VAT, uh, 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 Ether founder uh, dumping, you know. Yes. Uh, like it was just a whole bunch of like nonstop day after day. Uh, coordinated for you know biden uh ten thousand dollar tax you know and then just oh, the, yes, the way yes. everything's pushed the way everything is is pushed the whole binance uh under uh um investigation like yes. one thing after another it was yes. just like boom boom <laughs> boom 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 you know um yeah. so i felt the timing i don't know I, I really think they're trying to buy your 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 bitcoins uh yep. cheap. i really yeah. think so too yeah, I, I do think believe that. in I do believe in natural uh uh cycles too. Mm-hmm. And I also believe just as fast as we came down, mm-hmm. we'll be up just as fast. So again, mm-hmm. it's kind of I'd rather get it the bear market done condensed in a week to two week time frame, a small yes. time frame, and then just get it over with, as opposed yes. to it just being like a year to year uh cycle because. What we do for a 40, 30% correction, of course, you know, was it going to happen overnight? Um, I don't know. That's debatable. Yeah. Yeah. No, I, I, I love that. I actually agree with that a lot because I think, I think there was a natural correction due, but it was just, it was, it seemed very coordinated, very consistent, you know, every day it wasn't, you know, every day there was a new, or every couple of days, there's like a new, a new headline, you know? And so that's, yeah, that's very, very interesting. So, uh, so what, how are you positioning yourself in this market? Um, like, how would you, how would you give our viewers advice on how they can position themselves now, or should they just wait it out and not move much? Um, so just where we're at already, I think, uh, last time I looked at the charts, uh, ETH this morning dipped to 1718, currently at 2000. Uh, Bitcoin, uh, last time I looked at the chart, was like at 31, 32. Yesterday was like at 36. Um, so, me personally, do I think the bottom is in? I think we're around the bottom, you know? Mm-hmm. Uh, I, I, if I could pinpoint the bottom, you know, exactly, like I would tell you. But do I, <laughs> me personally, if, I feel like if you're already, if you got caught up in the top, I feel like there's almost me personally, not financial advice. I would, I think there's no yeah. point to sell currently right now. Uh, if we are, you know, what some people believe in the beginning of the, the bear market, you know, which is not out of the question. We've had an extraordinary run, you know, little run. Um, I, I, I'm still bullish by the way. I don't think this, mm-hmm. I think this is far from over. Um, but if we are, you know, in a bear market, uh, it doesn't, to me, it doesn't make sense to sell now because we have yet to see this, uh, big relief rally, you know, yes. where, where I believe, uh, if the bear market is over, 
uh, we'll see Bitcoin go to a final 45, 50 before mm -hmm. that final sell off. And if that's where you're looking, you know, to take some profit, I feel that would be a better to wait a little for mm -hmm. that big relief rally, as opposed to selling in a huge negative right now. Um, I got you. That's on the, if things, if we were to go bearish, um, but me personally, I actually believe we're going to see a pretty great recovery. Cause just think about it, uh, where we're at currently, and it's gotten pretty bad. You know, if you look at alts around the board, all, almost all alts, like whether you're holding a meme coin, a dog coin, or whether you're holding a strong FA, all like almost all alts across the board, you know, are down 60, 70%. Mm -hmm. yeah. Ethereum itself is down 50%. And it doesn't get more, you know, fundamental than Ethereum, you know? Mm -hmm. So um, me personally, I think if this is the worst that, that, that it's going to be, like this time last year, like if you mentioned the two thousand dollar Ethereum, you, you you like think about it where we're at. Yeah, you know. Yes. Like Bitcoin was just ten thousand dollars back in last fall, you know. Yep. So if this is the price that we gotta pay to ten x this time next year, like I'm all for it. Wow. You know. Yeah. Like this time next year, like hopefully we'll be facing uh you know, uh, Bitcoin goes from 250,000 to 150,000. You know, yeah. that's what we'll be freaking out about. <laughs> uh, yeah, <you> know? yeah. <laughs> I, I agree. I agree. And I guess I should point out that nothing we're talking about, viewers, is, is financial advice. This is our opinions as exactly. uh, experienced or semi-experienced traders. We're not telling you what you should do. We're only giving our opinions in an entertainment type format. So I should point that out for, for our viewers. But um so, wow. So, yeah, and I, I agree with basically all of that. It's like, it's amazing how we were at $10,000, you know, Bitcoin last year. And then now we're at 30, upwards $30,000. And that's just, that's incredible. That's amazing. But, you know, it's unfortunate if someone bought at that 58 or $55,000 Bitcoin, that, that would be, you know, you could be panicking. But I mean, if you've been holding for a while, then there's really no, no problems other than catching those profits, uh, you know, or missing that opportunity, but, um, but yeah, so that's great input from, from, from you right there. Um, and so I guess, uh, the last, the last, uh, question I would like to ask is what are your thoughts on all these different, uh, coins coming out with their own networks? Like, uh, like, there's so many, it feels like there's almost a dozen coins that are coming out with their own DeFi networks. You have Matic, uh, Phantom, uh, you know, Polygon and Matic, Phantom, BSC, uh, you know, and so, obviously we have the Ethereum and Tron and, and there's Harmony One now and all kinds of stuff. Are there any that you're looking at specifically for you or, or that you're interested in? Um, I actually think, well, for one, I think first part of your question, I think it's great. Um, I think what we're seeing is like basically what we saw with the internet and it's basically what happens with any developing industry. Mm -hmm. It's just, you got choices. It's, it's capitalism just naturally flowing. You, you're going to get different choices yes. for different consumers. So, you know, um, everyone's always talking about, you know, like a Ethereum killer or this and that, but what people don't realize is, you know, Walmart's not out of business just because target exists and targets not out of business. Like they're both thriving. They're both doing good, you know, and there's yeah. still a dollar store you know, and there's still BMWs and there's still Toyotas and people still drink Coke and still drink Pepsi. So mm -hmm. what we're seeing is in real time, the evolution of an industry, you know? Yes. Um, and to me, it's actually wonderful because it prevents what they could call centralization, you know, like, mm -hmm. like if Ethereum's down, okay, we can all run to Binance Smart Chain. If Binance Smart Chain is locking everything up, you know, uh, we can go to Seoul. If Seoul can handle the transactions, you know, we can start using Matic. And I think that's what mm -hmm. is cool about, you know, DeFi. So I'm all for it. You know, um, it gets a little bit trying to keep up with everything. Oh, yeah. With everything. Yes. You know, um, but, you know, put in that effort or at least keep up. Um, mm -hmm. You know, I always say if you don't know which, um, if you don't know which, like, like, which project to invest within the ecosystem, like, mm -hmm. Just invest in the main ecosystem yes. coin. You know, yes. like, you know, if you don't know what to invest in Ethereum, just just in, just invest yes. in Ethereum. If you don't know what to invest in Binance Smart Chain, you know, just hold the underlying asset. 
Yes, um, the central, the central token. Yes. You know, if you if you don't, if it all feels too much, because sometimes it does. Um, me personally, uh, Ethereum. I love Ethereum. Mm -hmm. Um, I think once the gas fees, you know, and I think yes. uh basically once ETH 2.0 is finished, uh, you know, hopefully sooner than yeah. later. Uh <laughs> I think, you know, um, I think it's gonna be the standard. Um, and I think Ethereum is actually the only coin approved uh by the feds too. Oh, okay. Yeah, yeah. by the SEC. Yeah, um, I think so too. Uh, I love Binance Smart Chain. Um, mm -hmm. So, so is pretty cool. Mm -hmm. um, I haven't got a chance to mess with Matic, uh, mm -hmm. but I know I'm missing out. So I'm definitely going to yep. get on Matic. Um, <laughs> and I haven't really messed with anything else right now. Mm -hmm. uh, but, you know, now that I have some downtime, I'm definitely going to go ahead and dabble in those. Yeah, do, do some research and, and check them out. Yeah. Exactly. That's that's really cool. I love that advice. You know, if you don't, if you can't keep up with all the networks, just invest in the underlying asset. I've I, that's one of the strategies that I've personally employed, and uh, is I think is a really good strategy to to consider because you're like, oh, I can't follow all these. It's like you know all the different telegrams and the different twitters and the different you know all that stuff. It's like really hard to follow if you don't have the time. But but just to, just you know, buy the asset and see, see how it goes. So I love that advice. I love that advice. Well, thank you so much, Plato. If you guys liked this video, uh, check out Plato's Twitter at earth to Plato and, uh, on his Twitter and follow him and, and be sure to like, and subscribe to my channel. If you like this kind of content, I really hope you guys enjoyed the video. Thank you so much, Plato, for, for right. letting me interview you and talking to us and, and my viewers. Uh, I really appreciate you doing this for us. And uh, thank you guys so much. Make good decisions, guys. Uh, do well. And we're, we will probably, we'll, we'll hope to come out and see better market days in the future. Talk to you later, guys.